What's up guys, today I'm gonna to tell you why the Velotrek Nomad 1 fat tire e-bike is my number one recommended budget-friendly hub drive fat tire e-bike. One of the reasons I like the Velotrek Nomad 1. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously? Check out my hitch. Not an empty box. It's one of the most powerful, torquiest, budget-friendly e-bikes I've ever tried. Let's see what else this bike can do. So this is a 750 watt fat tire e-bike, but it's not your standard 750 watt bike. This bike can actually output 1200 watts of peak power. And this bike has a lot more torque than your standard fat tire e-bike. So check it out. This is the 20% hill grade test that I do on like all my reviews of all my bikes. This bike can just dominate it. Watch from a stop, full throttle. I weigh 200 pounds, throttle only. This bike can just absolutely dominate this thing. 1200 watts output. Simple. And starting from a stop just like this on the middle of the hill, if I just give it a little bit of throttle, the bike can just start in the middle of the hill and climb this thing. This thing is a hill climbing monster and I actually took it to the Hollywood sign. The reason I took it out there is because it has a suitable battery and I know that it does so well climbing hills and is a comfortable bike. Let me show you the battery. So you can charge this battery on the bike or off the bike, just like pretty much every other bike. Take the battery out just like that. It matches the paint of the bike and it's listed as a 14.4 48 volt battery with 662 watt hours of energy. Now that's not the largest battery I've ever seen on an e-bike, but it's sufficient for most rides. I've gotten over 40 miles on this bike. Okay, so all my batteries died except for the one on this bike. The bike was on for a total of three hours and 39 minutes today. Uh, I did 35.4 five miles today on this bike. And that was uphill when I went to the Hollywood sign. Sure, you can get like a 20 amp hour battery, but it adds weight to the bike. Now this is the step through frame. So it's easy to get on the bike. Press that button to power it up and it's got a thumb throttle on the left. Let me show you how the pedal assist modes work. But before we do that, let me show you the acceleration. I weigh 200 pounds, we're gonna do thumb throttle only. This is GPS in my right hand. Ready, go. The acceleration on this bike is amongst the best of any of the bikes I've reviewed. 1200 watts of output, 20. And it'll, after you unlock it, it'll take you up to about 20, 24. So the way this thing is geared, it can accelerate and climb hills very well. It performs well from like zero to 25. One of the downsides is it doesn't go faster than like 24, 25. But for a bike that accelerates this quickly, I think the trade-off is worth it to not have that extra couple miles per hour. And one of the things I like about this bike is the thumb throttle. It has like a little rubber thing on it that it's just a little bit nicer than the typical thumb throttle you see on these budget bikes. And then the, the way the pedal assist works. So like I have it on pedal assist too, and I can just hold down the throttle all the way and it will give me a pedal assist to speed. So it'll just hold me at 15 miles an hour. I don't even have to pedal if I don't want to. I can pedal if I, you know, if I want to put in a little bit of extra power and get some exercise, but you can just cruise if that's, you know, you don't really feel like pedaling. You can do some donuts in the middle of the intersection. Let's bump it on to three though. So I'm just holding down the thr throttle all the way. Three gives you a little boost in power, 1200 watts for a moment there until it gets you up to like 17. Bump it again. Oh, I missed it. Bump it again. Gives you that surge of a thousand watts-ish and brings you up to 21. Now, this is what the bike unlocked. When you get this thing out of the box, it tops out at uh, 20, which is a class two e-bike, which makes it more legal in more places. But, you know, I like a little bit extra speed. So pedal assist five, now throttle, going around this corner. Little motorcycle is what we got, really. Bring us up to, woo! <laughs> I'm gonna slow it down a bit. So obviously, you know, running higher speeds and higher power, you're gonna drain your battery a little faster, but you don't have to go crazy on the power. You can just, you know, you don't have to press the throttle all the way down. You can put on pedal assist five and just kind of give it like, 100 watts, 200 watts. You don't have to use all the power, but you got a lot of power on tap, which is great in my opinion. And then it's got hydraulic brakes too, like good hydraulic brakes. The other thing I like about it is the riding position. It has like a comfortable wide seat. The handlebars are like swept back. It's got ergonomic style, like rubber grips that are held in place with a little bolt there so they won't rotate on you. 
All around, I mean, it's just a pretty well put together bike for the price, in my opinion. I know a lot of people have bought this bike and a lot of people are happy with this bike. It's popular. It has front suspension. The zip off the line, man, this thing just, it's got so much more punch than a typical 750 watt bike. One thing that I don't love about it is it doesn't give you a voltage readout for the actual voltage of the battery. You just get this little bar indicator so you don't ever really know exactly where your battery is. To most people that won't matter as kind of like a bike nerd. Um, I kind of like to see the voltage of the battery. On rare occasions I do wish this bike had a little bit more speed but really I mean 24 25 is like really all you need. Once you start going over once you start going over like 24, 25, the amount of range that you're gonna get on an e-bike is gonna go down significantly. Speed just kills range on electric bikes. But riding into a headwind, this thing's giving me like 900 watts right now. Just overcoming the wind, holding 25 miles an hour. This is a very strong bike. It's good for somebody who weighs a lot. I mean, I weigh 200 pounds and this thing carries me fine. And I forget if I mentioned it or not, but the step through frame, I've really come to like, like these cause they're just so easy to get on. You know, sometimes people call it like the female frame or something, but I mean, dude, I, I review a lot of bikes and it kind of gets old having to lift your leg up really high, but they do have this bike available in either step through or the normal high step. And then the other thing is it has eight gears and they shift like really snappy. And you can get a little exercise on this little mini motorcycle. So it's not all positives with the Velotrek Nomad 1. There are some potential downsides and that kind of comes down to the power. So if you're gonna be running this thing on high power, a 14.4 amp hour battery, you could burn through that quicker than like a typical 750 watt hub motor that will only draw, you know, maybe like a thousand watts peak power. You don't have to run it hard though. You really don't. Like I'm just pinning it on pedal assist three right now and it's giving me 300 watts. Then maybe another potential downside. This is kind of, you know, subjective to the user, I suppose, but the way the pedal assist works on this bike is different than a typical bike. So it has basically like speed tiers, like pedal assist one will give you power, like a lower amount of power up to uh, 11 miles an hour. Even if you give it like full throttle, it'll only let you go 12 miles an hour. It doesn't give you access to all that power. Now, in my opinion, this is actually kind of nice because it gives you kind of like five levels of like cruise control basically where you know if you just want to go 12 and not have to worry about pedaling you can just hold it you know what i'm saying like it's simple you don't have to like try and get the throttle like position in one exact spot which is kind of difficult to do on a lot of these bikes the throttles on these cheaper bikes is kind of sensitive and it's kind of hard to like hold it exactly where you want to so the seat is a quick adjust seat I was kind of riding with a little bit low because I'm not really planning on doing like a lot of exercise on today's ride. I'm just kind of getting out for a beach ride, but it goes up like decently high. I'm six foot five and you know, getting on this bike, it's technically, you know, I'm not getting like the full pedal stroke, you know, like for like an exercise bike, but this is like a great uh, riding position. Like I feel comfortable, you know, I'm getting exercise in a nice upright riding position. It's just a comfortable bike to be on for a long time. There's a reason why I chose this one when I did my Hollywood ride, the ride out to the Hollywood sign. You know, it's just so good at climbing hills, has good range and good comfort all around. So I've recently been getting some comments. Hey man, I've had this bike for quite a long time now. So I've had a chance to put, you know, some miles on this thing and it's been holding up good. I did get a flat tire when I was out at the Hollywood sign, but that was any bike would have got a flat tire running over the, the object I ran How over. What happened? How did this? <laughs> Can't think of a worse place for this to happen. <sighs> What the? It literally looks like this was like a spike planted in the ground. You can see the shadow of it. So it was like a spike like angled and pointed towards my tire and it just hit just right. I don't think any tire could prevent a puncture like this. Let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, to talk about some of the downsides potentially of this bike, this is a cadence sensor bike. So it can give you like a little bit of like abrupt power surges, but that's one trade off you're going to make with a higher power bike. Personally, I like the power. If you don't like power, then this might not be your cup of tea, but there's a lot of benefits of power. I mean, if you want to climb hills, you want to accelerate quickly, you're going to want power. Let's just try this uh, sand section here. Bump it on up. Just 
bike. Oh, come on now, don't fail me here. I wouldn't have enough speed. We're gonna do that again in just a second. This bike is not a wuss. I just wasn't prepared going into it. I'll show you guys. I have it shifted down to gear one, pedal assist five. Now, now let's do this with a little bit of a rollout. A little pedaling. Yeah, Nomad One is a torque monster. <laughs> We're gonna race an ET cycle here, throttle only. Uh, should we do like one pedal to get it going? Like one half kick? Yeah. You can, I'm gonna do throttle only. Okay, <laughs> set, go. <laughs> right. <laughs> this one accelerates quickly. Where's the cop back? <laughs> yeah, this that's uh, one good thing about this bike. It accelerates. It climbs bad. hills really well. It's got like a lot of torque. This is like my best like hill climbing bike. Um, How about going through the sand. And of course, the fat tires can take us off in the sand. Throttle only. Absolute beast mode, man. I feel like I'm about to get some air going off that little jump. And then we can go up this hill though, too, for likely, look. Yeah, up the hill in the sand. Oh, bouncing right along here, man. This thing's great, just cruising along on pedal assist too, though, giving me like 300 watts of power, holding 15 miles an hour. We already know this bike's gonna be able to do this hill climb. I'm gonna leave it on pedal assist too and just kind of start off really slow on this one and see what it'll do on pedal assist too. Man, it's just literally pulling me up this hill. Like I'm not even like pedaling. It's just like beast mode. I'll bump it onto three and it'll probably go. Oh, oh I should have stopped pedaling. The cadence center kicked off when I stopped pedaling. But yeah, I mean, obviously we already knew it was going to do that, but we're running it through the tail happy circuit today. So just to keep things fair with other bikes I've reviewed, we'll go ahead and run it up the California incline. It's an 85 foot climb, 7% grade. I'm just going to leave it on pedal assist too, rolling into here, uh, throttle only. Just like every other bike. Absolutely no problem. Just delivering a thousand watts of power continuously and starting at the bottom of the California incline, give it a little bit of juice. It'll bump us straight up to 1200 watts very quickly. And yeah, obviously this thing is just gonna wreck this <laughs> California incline. We're already going 18, like at the bottom. Typically these bikes, some of these bikes don't even hit like 16 till the top. Still pulling 1100 watts, 22 miles an hour. And if you've been here to see any of my other reviews, you know we are just down there. So what are the brakes like? So when it comes to brakes, 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes are the gold standard in my opinion. Let me show you what these ones are like. From 20, this thing stops quick. And since they're hydraulic, they feel really smooth when you're grabbing them. They're not like jumpy, like mechanical brakes, and you'll have less uh, regular maintenance on them. They'll just kind of take care of themselves. So I've been getting a lot of questions about what is my number one recommended fat tire e-bike. And I'd have to say right now, the Velotrek Nomad one is. It's not perfect, but it is one of my personal favorites for my riding style. And if you do want to grab one, you can get one for $1,439 if you use my discount code MATT60 at checkout. M-A-T-T-6-0. And one little last bonus for you. This bike is actually UL certified. The battery is UL certified. And that is a thing that most budget-friendly bikes do not do. It goes through like some actual testing and stuff, whereas some of these bikes out of China, they don't have any sort of UL rating at all. This one is UL 2271 rated. All right guys, just made it back into the neighborhood. 18 miles today, an hour and a half of ride time. Two out of five bars remaining. Two out of five is kind of like an ambiguous number. So I wish this display did show the voltage of the battery so I could tell an exact number, what the actual percentage is. What I can tell you for sure is I rode this bike to the Hollywood sign and did 40 miles of range on this battery. And that was going up a pretty steep hill, like 1600 feet of elevation gain. If you wanna see that video, I'll link it down in the description box. So this is my favorite budget-friendly fat tire e-bike. If you wanna grab one, link is in the description box. Use my discount code. However, even though I like this fat tire e-bike, I know it's not gonna be everybody's favorite. So if this is not the bike for you, you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment. Catch you next time.